Welcome back to episode 29 of Tall Boy Radio. Last time out, we were talking about a couple of fairly controversial topics in terms of the news stories, the prominent news stories of 2020. This time, you've got a couple of old guys talking about social media and sharing our opinions on that. So, Let's start off, as we always do, by saying hello and talking about what we're drinking. Gaza? Um, I'm going very boring, similar to the previous weeks, with one of my favourite beers, which is Beer Moretti. Um, I am again drinking it out of an original TBR glass. And I'm actually using, I don't know if you can quite see that, a Double Trouble Gin beer mat. So Great. there we go. Great bit of promotion. Andy? Ah, nice. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Kindly bought me a bottle of this for my birthday, and I have to say I greatly enjoy drinking that one. Ken? Um, Currently on uh, Dead Man's Finger uh, Lime Rum and Dr. Pepper. And if we're going to the South Lusley Pro Road, I'm a Svenska Bar in Gran Canaria beer map. There you go. There you go. go. They'll be glad for the plug, believe me. (laughs) They might very well need it at this point in time. So I'm drinking a Brewdog OG Hazy. Uh, so this was the seasonal ale that they did last year. It's a New England IPA. It was done as the, um, they do a standard one, a, a Hazy Jane or whatever it's called. And this was the seasonal version of that. And they brought it back because it was so popular. As you can see, real hazy beer in a TBR yeah. glass. And it's fantastic. 7.2 of IPA glory. Nice, nice work. So we're going to talk about social media, our feelings, our opinions on that. So let's start off by telling people out there what a uh, what what social media we are on. Gaza, um, I generally only use I, I use Facebook, which is obviously sort of shows how old I am and how much of a dinosaur I now am. Um, I tweet and use Twitter quite a lot i suppose that's the social media one that i use most of um being a 47 year old middle-aged man with two teenage daughters i keep an eye on um to snapchat instagram in particular um i don't profess to use them to any great um depth as such or in any great quantity so um i suspect mainly so facebook twitter really are the other two for me um as i say i'm a bit of a dinosaur uh, i do teach it so i have to keep abreast of various sort of um social media um sort of platforms and and and, and i've got one or two views on how teenagers sort of use my kids use them generally but uh, in terms of me personally probably twitter really no doubt we'll get to those views a little bit later absolutely yeah andy I use the other one sparingly. <laughs> Ken? Um, yeah, as like Gaz said, I've kind of, I started on Facebook. I have a Twitter account. I have a Snapchat account. I have a Instagram account. I use Instagram mostly for various snaps I take. Um, uh, Snapchat, because I've got some friends in America I keep in touch with, and it's nice for them to see here and for me to see there. Um, so that's an easier way of doing that. It's just quick bite-sized videos. But yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Cool. So for myself, I use Instagram and Twitter, probably the most of all, at Beans and Bourbon. If you want to give me a follow, that's all good. And shameless. Then shameless plug. Uh, and then obviously <laughs> I, I use Facebook as well because I feel obliged to because everybody was doing it. Uh, but Twitter is probably the thing that I use the most. Um, One thing that I do remember about you and Twitter, though, was that you sort of got on, sort of got on board with Twitter pretty much as it exploded, didn't yeah, you? And, and yeah. I was a bit late to sort of Twitter, and it was, it was sort of odd, really, that sort of, I say, introduced me to it as such. But I remember you saying it almost like overnight. Was it, a, I want to say it was over like a Christmas period or something yeah. that you started, and then almost overnight there were all these like followers that you know like retweet me and retweet me and all of this lot and went from like zero to 
hundreds. And now, what are you on now? About nine or thousand, ten? I don't nice. know what it... To be honest with you, since we started doing the podcast, I have pretty much stopped using that Twitter account. I just use it to retweet. I uh, really do. Stuff. Yeah. Are you TBR now? Are you? Yeah. So I mainly use TBR, but. I got up to about 11,500 followers until Twitter started culling people. Um, not literally, obviously. But just, 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 <laughs> it's, just, it, it, really I still really don't quite get how 11,500 people would want to know the ramblings of ad. <laughs> but hey, the, <laughs> seem, seem to. the long-term goal is to get up to that with, with TBR. But no, I've still got about, I think it's about 8,500 followers on, on that regular account. And literally all I do on that, I'm very, very occasionally tweet about the Steelers, about yeah. Arsenal. But mainly I just use it to retweet TBR so that we can get the message out to yeah, 8,500 yeah. people. Yeah. But it was it was a guy called Richard Harrison who we went to school with. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember Harrison, Harrison. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not the one who owns the pawn shop in Las Vegas, sadly. Uh, but a different guy called Richard I'm Harrison. I'm surprised you knew that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A very famous pawn shop. You might have seen porn stars on TV. That's Richard Harrison. Uh, but yeah, he, he headed up the Geek Squad originally. Now he moved down to New Zealand again down there. But we went to school with him, and he said, you know, he said to me, "Forget about Facebook. It's not very interesting. Get yourself over to Twitter. It's far, far more interesting people over there." So that's what I did. And I, I must admit, I love Twitter. That is my most favorite of all the uh, the yeah. social medias but you know has, has anybody got any whenever you hear a story about social media in the press it's normally fairly negative isn't it mm -hmm. so has anybody got any positive stories to share uh, well I, I mean i think the fact that the world is becoming a much smaller place in terms of sort of the, the communications that we can have with lots of people in lots of various different mm. countries uh, around the world. Um, so in terms of keeping in touch with people, um, I've got sort of um, a couple of colleagues that um, from my old school that one, one's in Canada, one's in Australia, you know, so in terms of keeping in touch with them and, and we've, I've got a guy who, um, he's more on Facebook, but um, Nick Govier, who I went to sort of school yeah, with, yeah. He, he's, he's in America now. Um, obviously, Steve Cartledge is, you know, he's, he's in Chicago. Um, so in terms of, I suppose, keeping in touch with people who are from much further afield, it makes it much, much, much easier. Um, I think there's a lot of negative stuff about social media. I think uh, from an educational point of view, I think there's so much positive stuff you can do from an education point of view in terms of learning about the world and about the environment you're in and about different people and all that sort of stuff um don't get me wrong i think there's a negative you know there's a negative aspect to it um in terms of a positive news story for me personally nothing specific other than you know you might hear of um the birth of a child from a friend that you knew or, uh, uh, you know, um, somebody that, that you were sort of good friends with. I've got a, a good friend called Nick who emigrated with his family to, to Australia a number of years ago. We keep in touch, you know, sort of regularly and stuff. So, um, so from that point of view, it's all positive because actually, and it sounds weird, you don't really want to pick up the phone and actually ring them. No. You'd much rather yeah. tweet them or Facebook them or tag them or whatever it may be. And actually, it seems as though the verbal communication side of it is sort of just died a death, really. You'd much rather tag someone in Facebook or tag them on a tweet. Well, that's an interesting thing, actually, when you say that, because text messaging is, you know, prior to social media was massive. And the text messaging service was set up on phones by the phone companies as a way of them sending a message to your phones to give you messages and information about their service. And it's only when some smart guy came up with the idea that why don't we offer this open to our yeah. customers that that's where that took off, yeah. which I find amazing. Ken, have you got any positive stories? Um, I, I, well, I think from a positivity standpoint, I think, as Gaz pointed out, the communication value of Twitter or, or social media in general means that if people change their phones so often nowadays, people change their phone numbers so often, that I think there's a perspective that if you, that people very rarely change their Facebook handle or their Twitter handle or anything like that. So you can just stay in touch with them that way if, you lose their number or or sort of thing. I think one of the most exciting thing, one of my one of my very very good friends in Chicago, Jen, the reason I met her is because I won uh, a competition on 
the Chicago Blackhawks uh, Twitter account. Sweet. They've so I'm. For year for a very very for a long time now, it's just like I've been followed by the Chicago Blackhawks, the NHL ice hockey team, which I'm in very very proud of. And it was one of those moments where as soon as he, I still got the video on Facebook somewhere where I asked they actually asked my question on Blackhawks TV, and the Blackhawks followed me and have followed me ever since. And to have something a team you follow or a team you love and and like watching and being involved with to follow you on a social media account is is massive it's yeah. such a great boost because it shows actually you know what yeah i mean sometimes you know it's easier for people to interact via social media than as guys points out picking up the phone nobody picks up the phone anymore no i'm sure i'm sure adam you were as surprised as i was when you answered your phone when i phoned you that day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like nobody uses the phone people look at the phone now it's just like it's making noise what what's it doing it's yeah. just like but for it's people it's easier for people now although there is less emotional involvement in a text message because the words can be taken whichever way the person yeah. reading it takes it especially with these sort of things i think i think positivity comes from actual just people staying in touch it's but, easy but, for people to stay in touch well that was the, the, what you've just mentioned there is that's the very reason that they brought out the emoticons and and the emojis and and so that you could try to convey that actually, are you being sarcastic there or yep. are you actually making a valid yep. point type yep. thing? Because Absolutely. it's very, very difficult over written communication to convey that, I suppose, isn't it? So Absolutely. But yeah, my, my most, one of my most positive experiences was meeting a, a very good friend of mine, Jen, who messaged me to say congratulations on winning the competition. I hadn't known until she'd messaged me to say that and then I got a follow from the Blackhawks and, 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 me, and me and Jen have been friends for years. So it's a, great, it's a great experience from that point I believe social media has got some negative press quite recently, quite quite in the last two or three years, because yeah. of the differences in uh, it's it's moved away from like I was saying about Facebook and being a dinosaur. The best thing I ever did one morning was I removed the 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 button on my toolbar on, on Chrome to just get rid of Facebook. Facebook when I first started on Facebook was about sharing photos with your friends organizing nights out chatting about what was going on and now it's just turned into a flame fest let's see what i can say the most controversial thing and say if it takes me yeah. two minutes to get flamed it's it's not what it used to be um but I, there are probably because i think it completely depends on the person who's involved in in the interaction uh, they can make the positive or, or or negative depending on who they are. H hence, why you can get now like trolls, internet trolls. Yeah. We'll, will... we'll get we'll get onto that a bit later. We're trying we're trying to get <laughs> positives right Sorry, now. Sorry, you can edit yeah. that. <laughs> right, no, no, we're, we're leaving it because it's, they're all valid points. So before we go to Andy, I just want to shout out like, the Arsenal FC. Don't follow many people. Do follow Beans of Bourbon. Anyway, oh, can I can, uh, I can I can I just throw in there? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Can, can I just throw in there that Jamie Redknapp follows at Ramos Windstorm? Get out of that. Does he, oh. he absolutely does. does Whether well, he still does, oh, but he okay, did. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> uh, so who's so who's got the most famous follower though? Arsenal FC. Yeah. Well, Jamie Redknapp. Nah, he played for Liverpool. Don't count. <laughs> oh, <laughs> played, oh, oh, played for Spurs <laughs> as well. So let's not get yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Andy, positive stories. Um, when you originally asked the question, I was thinking I, I I use a lot of social media just for ideas. So you might put from a van or whatever. And, Bits. Holiday ideas as well. Like a lot of people I follow on Instagram, for example, they have the same band who just tour the country and in Europe. Uh, but then I was just thinking, then actually, a lot of musicians I like um, show like you know it's like behind their scenes. You see their lives like at home and stuff. And especially with this COVID thing, they're all like doing recordings now uh, yeah. uh, of their songs all sat at home. It's it's quite an interesting thing. So they're doing like virtual concerts, should we say? Uh, and that's that's one thing I, I loved about like uh, Instagram and Facebook, for example, is like Alien at Farm and Aaron Lewis them stained. He's done like a country. He does a lot of solo stuff, but he's he's been doing like all these like live shows and stuff and playing his, his various covers and stuff like. That. And, yeah, been loving it. That's, that's my thing. Well, I've got I've got two personal. Po very positive stories to come out of it. One of which, now Gary and I, it's something that we don't really talk about very much. 
Guinness World Records. <laughs> but no, we last you uh, earlier never mentioned this. Never, we, yeah, you we guys rarely do. To yeah, be fair, for, <laughs> for, for Ken, for Andy, this is all new stuff for you. But no, earlier this year we we set a brand new Guinness World Record, and we promoted that very very heavily on social media. Yeah, and the guys from Trouble Trouble Drinks got behind that. They promoted it as well. Set up codes, as we said on the episode. If you go back and listen to that one, please do because it was a fantastic fantastic episode but that was great but the real story behind that came from a chap by the name of dark wolf 180 didn't it yeah, on, on, on there who suddenly stepped up i remember I'm, i phoned you up and i was at work saying guys this guy dark wolf 180 has just donated we set our target as as 1000 pounds we have 165 pounds worth of sponsorship and this guy's just Gave us eight hundred and thirty-five pounds, made us up to that thousand. No idea who he is, yeah. and, and you know. And then, strangely enough, it went on from there. They did an episode of Dark Planet TV where yeah. Raymond Van Barnevelt turned up at this guy's house, played darts, and he said, "For every one eighty they hit, we will donate one hundred pounds." And he and he was good to his word, yeah. wasn't he? And he even donated yeah. for the one seventy that they hit, and, yeah. and donated something somewhere around about fifteen hundred pounds. And then on top of that, I said, "You know what?" That's not good enough. The what the the bullseyes that they hit from kneeling down that was fantastic. So Barney hit was it three? So he hits, no, he hit two balls and two balls and twenty five. Which to be fair, if you've ever tried it, it's pretty hard. I've tried it. It's nigh on impossible. Well, I've got a story about that. But that's a different. Well, one. we'll come to that. One. <laughs> this is how you put the hole in the wall. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, and anyway, anyway, like so, we we then got a donation of another two thousand three hundred. Yeah. And we were playing on the day, and it was a fairly emotional day when you stay awake for that amount of time. Yeah. And then we broke the record. And well, it got to the point we couldn't give them monkeys, could we? And then we got a text saying or a message saying well, it. It was the, the target we put was a thousand, and he basically. He he allowed us to hit that within a week or whatever it was. Yeah. And I say I'd, I'd sent the text in. Have you seen this dude? Do you know who he is? Have you seen it? I was like, no. Went logged on. It's like, oh my god, we've got a thousand pounds. We were chuffed at that. Oh, and, then, we were over the moon. and and we were sort of talking. And and I said the way this is going. And to this day, yeah. generally don't know who Dark Wolf no, is. Nobody does, and that's the interesting that's thing. The thing. Yeah, you know, and and, and actually, actually, you know what? If if you are listening um, thank you very much yeah. um, and if anybody is listening that knows him or her we well, um, do know that he was originally listening to this podcast because he follows again we're talking about people he doesn't follow many people but he follows this podcast and I do know as well we've got a number of listeners in New York where he's based so he so, could yeah, very well be um, listening and, and we, we, so during the, the world record we, we, we needed to hit a specific number of doubles and me and I got together and we were like you know what? I genuinely don't think it will be the last time no. that he donates. But we didn't expect what we got. Did, we? Oh, uh, like I, uh, if he if he didn't do it, we would have still been massively appreciative of of what he did oh, do. Yeah. And then to get the tweet that said, actually, what what I'll do is for every double that you hit, I'll match in terms of a. You know, in terms of a donation, we were like, Pound, wasn't it? Yeah. Are you so kidding? Bear like, in like, mind, at this point, when he sent that tweet, we had already hit 3,600. Yeah. yeah. So we knew we were going to get a donation, uh, bare minimum of 3,000. Well, we, and we got to the point where we thought, we'll, we'll get to 3,600, then we might have a break, and we might play a little bit of darts, but we weren't that... Not we weren't that bothered, but we'd, we hit, knew, the rec- we'd we hit the record. We knew we'd done it. We knew we'd done it. And, and as soon as that tweet came through, and he went, basically, whatever your final total is... I will donate that in pounds. Well, that was it when we were like, yeah. right, I'm not being funny, guys, because we were very much obviously we 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 were throwing um to support sort of Great Ormond Street. So we were like, every single double that we now hit from now on there's means that there's around. a pound towards going to help a, a child that's ill, um, to put a family uh, you know, to, to house a family for a night mm. or, or whatever whatever that money is going to be. And that's a huge incentive, isn't it? And I know the Great Ormond Street get millions of pounds a year in terms of donations and stuff, but we hairs in the back of my neck now, mm. you know, we mm. genuinely thought, and, and, and to this day, I genuinely believe we have helped yeah. an individual, a series of individuals either to get better or to house a family or to make some respite care better and that 
basically came from social media. Yeah, wasn't it? Oh, social media. You know, we, so far we've we we raised over twelve thousand pounds, and this guy donated over ten thousand pounds of that. So that is for me. You, uh, you can't. Uh, we never planned this. What no, we say, no, we, we never no. dreamt no. that it could get you know no. get to this. So we we. I've said thank you to this guy a number of times, yeah. and, and his generosity didn't end there. Mm, you no. know, the, you know, he's also donated um, next next to you, me, so, and Sid. So he gave it. So that's a thousand pounds right there. And so, so the, there was a giveaway, and you had to retweet and enter. So, and I was fortunate enough. I, I don't know whether you were the first. Did you win the first one? I can't remember. Mm. But I'd basically won an excess, and I won. Well, you're the only person to win two. <laughs> I am the only person to win two. Only person to win two. Because th there was a second giveaway, and my name came up, and I actually contacted the guys from was it Darts Planet? Yeah, yeah. So Dart was, and so I contacted them, and said, "Look, it's great, but I've already got one. Um, would you be happy if I donated that to somebody else?" And they said, "Well, we need to double check because actually your name shouldn't have come up twice." Anyway, day later, whatever they said, "Yep, yeah, your name's come up twice, so mm. hell, it's yours." So yes, obviously I don't normal know. link again. Yeah, absolutely, mate. So so I I donated that to Sid. So again, we were so fortunate. Mm -hmm. Me had you know good mates. My brother has now got one, and you know that that was through Dark Wolf. We got an article in Darts Planet TV. Uh, Darts Planet, so didn't we? Yeah, the magazine, and obviously yeah. that that's gone out in written press as well in terms of a a, a magazine, and and we got a little bit of sort of. Um, coverage from from their point of view, from their social media, and it's just like it just exploded, didn't it? Really, yeah, and way more than we could have imagined. And way we, more. We were like, can you imagine if it's somebody famous? And, and obviously, mm. I, we don't know who it is, but if it's somebody famous that that is Dark Wolf or whatever, and there's also wild conspiracy theories about who it Kim's could be, theory, and, yeah, Kim's got and you know, theory. Kim obviously has had a, a, a theory for, for for a while, but. Absolutely. I've got to hear this. What's the theory? Go on. Oh, no, we're not, we're not sharing. No, we can't share. No, no, no. Oh, God, God, what a tease. God, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got the, I've got the text message when she came when I was at work. She texted me and said, I've got this theory. So go on. Well, if it ever is, if ever does yeah. come out, then obviously we've got the evidence. That actually, we, we knew yeah. years ago, we yeah. knew. Um, does, it, does it hold water yet? Yeah. It adds up. There's, there's, there's yeah. logic behind it. Yeah. But, but okay. it's interesting because... <laughs> we, you know, if we did this, if we did this world record ten years ago, mm. twenty years ago, nowhere, no way would we have raised the money that that well, we did. The, the first one, um, let's say the first one, the first one that we were successful, the first one that we were successful on. Yeah, we we raised around about five thousand. We raised, I think, it was around about three thousand for cancer research and two thousand for the British Red Cross helping the cause for loneliness. Yeah. Um, so we were over the moon with what we achieved there. This time to surpass that. And then now we've got the pressure that if we do it again, and let's face it, we know. We, we know we're going to, we, yeah. Well, we'll the next it. one is, will be to try and, in my eyes, it will be to re-break the longest game of darts. Because <laughs> there's, 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 there's four guys in Aberdeen. Yeah, somewhere in Scotland. I think it's Aberdeen. Aberdeen, yeah. I think, and they based. Did they get to the fifty hours? They got to the. They aimed for the sixty and got to the fifty. They aimed to f sixty and got to fifty. I think we can go longer than that. So I, I need to talk him into it, and he keeps shaking his head. But he'll do it. He knows he will. Um, he's shaking his head behind. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it'll so, be a fifty-hour podcast. As well. Yeah, you oh, know it. Oh, oh, maybe. No, maybe. Oh, no. I'll live stream that. Now you could live stream it. Yeah. You could absolutely get some sort of TBR representatives on there because we would probably be playing. But there's no reason why you two guys couldn't yeah. sort of host a, a TBR. I like that dude. podcast. And yeah, you see, I'm, all ideas. Oh, well, I'm getting sucked in again. And, but <laughs> yeah, but it's, it. not a lot. No. <laughs> but it's still, a little bit of beer. Yeah, but that's still, the one. But I still maintain that without Dark Wolf. We wouldn't have obviously raised anywhere near the money that we would have done, and no. we would be under a bit of pressure next time to try and use all of our social media outlets, all of us, mm. to try and generate that that level of interest again. Yeah. You'd like to think that Double Trouble will be involved oh, again, no and they've yeah, no said doubt. they pretty much would be happy to try and support us with something. You'd get in touch with Darts Planet again, maybe see where they would be able to do yeah, something. You know, so there's various other things that you could do. Um, 
But we wouldn't have had the success that we did if it wasn't for social media. No. So that's a massively positive it is. spin. See, now, as I said, I've got two stories. The next one's going to seem a massive anticlimax after that. <laughs> so led with the other one. The other one, I sent a random tweet off to a comedian by the name of Dave Gorman. Oh, I here? remember this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I forget what it was about. He was he was in between his series of Genius, which he had. I forget which channel it was on. It might have been Dave, might have been Sky. And he said, I like your idea. We're actually holding a uh, sort of a think session, a think group. Why don't you come down, share your opinions, come down to BBC Television in London and and, and sit in on this group? I thought, yeah, absolutely, I'm going to do that. Yeah. So I went down and there was a group of maybe about 20 or 30 people in the room. We talked it over. They put it together in a show and presented it back to us. Um, and at the end, we had a brief time to chat to him. And that, for me, is a massive, massive positive about social media. I'm a huge, huge Dave Gorman fan, big fan of flannel, just like Dave is. Um, but not only that, it was that was a great and fairly unique experience. And strangely enough, the 20 or 30 people in the room had similar risk stories to tell to me, but they're a fairly diverse bunch. So those are... And that, like I said, wow, that is a massive yeah. anticlimax, isn't it? After the last, well, one. no, it is. But it was still a good one. I have a book. I have a book upstairs. He gave me a book. Um, his uh, Unchained, I think it was America Unchained, where he travelled across America. Is that camp. where he meets all the Dave Gormans? No, this is one where he travelled across America, only stopping at mom and pop shops and, oh, and petrol okay. stations. Oh, okay. And embarrassingly, I was big into Twitter at the time. I asked him to sign it to the Monkey Tramp, which is <laughs> which is now no longer my Twitter <laughs> handle. It's been it's been a boom, and so that was. I remember the Almost valueless, <laughs> yeah. I've tried to get it back, but somebody else is using it. Really? Um, that's unbelievable, isn't it? Wow. Well, well. <laughs> so, so those are the those are the positive stories. So, like I said, we're all guys. One thing that we never mentioned, other than I think I can't remember if we mentioned it in this podcast or whether we mentioned it at the start, was TikTok, probably the newest of the social media phenomena. Obviously, t- the TBR podcast is on TikTok. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please. Well, this is the sad part about it is that we, I stuck a video on, it was one that we do to promote it on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We share it out on those sites. And it's had 167 views, which sounds impressive, but when you see it compared to <laughs> some of the others, it's, it's pretty piss poor. And we have one like, and that's your daughter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. My daughter, my daughter loves TikTok. And would happily spend hours a day on TikTok, um, and you know some of her idols and who she wants to be are these these sort of social influencers, and that's yeah. something that, that you know we we need to perhaps Definitely. bring into the conversation is is and that there was a stat there was a presentation that, that went around a number of years ago called Shift Happens. Notice I pronounced the F there. Um, that's right. And it talked about um, basically, you know, the top 10 in demand jobs in 2010 didn't exist in 2000 and stuff. So times change and, and actually jobs that people want to go for years ago just weren't jobs. And you talk about your social influencers, your YouTubers, your bloggers, your vloggers, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And um, and it's funny because me and Ad were talking off air about people who have had like a million views on YouTube and various other social media earning hundreds of thousands of pounds per uploaded video. And you're thinking, excuse my French, you're like, holy shit, like where did that come from sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my daughter loves, in fact, she'd be proud as punch that she's got a mention and and, and I'll, I'll say to her that she needs to make sure she likes more TV or TikTok stuff. And to be fair, she did say, if you did want, any sort of video TikTok of her promoting TBR, she would be happy to do it. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll we sort go. of we'll wait and see what what happens of that. Um, but yeah, so Abby, my youngest, sort of likes it, but Amy would happily spend hours just watching TikTok, literally TikTok videos, copying the dances, the moves, and all sorts of stuff. I've been. I'll be honest. I've been fairly dismissive of it, of it as an as an opportunity to promote the podcast because, let's face it, it's not really 
our demographic. No, no. But there's another podcast, Todd Orndorff on the Toddcast, and he did a pretty decent video, and he gets a lot of likes and a lot of views on his on his TikToks, to be fair. And he is, I'm not, I'm not going to disrespect the guy and say he's in our age group, but he's nearer to Andy's than to mine and yours, and it's fair <laughs> to say. So he's younger than you, Ken. It's, oh, I'm sorry to say that. But, yeah, so he he's used right. it. I, yeah. and I'm an old man, of, I've embraced it. It's fine. <laughs> Good man. Well, it's it's one of those things. Like I, I was, I, I downloaded the app and I used it because I read something on, on on many of the podcast groups I'm a member of on Facebook saying, actually, it's a great way to enhance it. And people dismiss Facebook, they dismiss Instagram, sort yeah. of saying it is just for kids. Nobody's going to buy into it. But ultimately, Generation X is like us. Make it clear, we're not boomers. We talked about this before, and I many times I've had a response saying, "Okay, boomer on Twitter." We're not. We're Generation X. It's Andy, probably Generation Z, are you? I don't know. Generation Z, yeah. Yeah. Being the young pup that you are. What are your opinions on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> well. I, I tend to watch YouTube, and, and there's people on there that would like clip TikTok stuff. It's not for me. But it's some of the more popular uh, TikTokers, I can't name them. Mm. It's it's a bit too cringy for me. Um, mm. They just do like it's like video memes, isn't it? From the stuff mm. I've seen. I mean, it's it's probably more to TikTok than what I've seen. But the, the bits I've seen, I was like, oh hell no, I can't watch this. <laughs> 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 it just, just be like some like, some person dancing, and I'm like, like is that dancing is, nowadays? Like, it, mm. it literally is some person dance, and they dance for five seconds, and they give it all of this, and then then you get like thousands of kids just mm. copying it and then all of a sudden it becomes a craze and then they get paid x thousand of pounds depending on how many views they've had and you're just like so basically getting a video for just and it's like they're earning money by doing that and you're like really my daughter that would be cringy embarrassed now by the way <laughs> the fact that i've just tried to do a tiktok there you know she would she would be mortified but but a few think... years ago, that would be called dad dancing, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, no, it still is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but tick, that's cool on TikTok, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Ken, what's your opinion on TikTok, then? What, you got any thoughts on uh, that? TikTok, um, yeah. I'm, again, I, I'm of the same opinion. It's trying to be what I think what Snapchat tried to be at the very beginning. And I think TikTok has now, I think within the last six months, gained a very negative reputation due to the fact that it's openly said that all the data goes to China. Yeah. On your phone, literally all the data on your phone, it will harvest your data and it will send it to China. And that's that. People, um, there, there was a recent round to, to hark back to a previous um, podcast, which people haven't listened to, go listen to it, about gaming. We talk about Ninja. <laughs> Ninja recently put on social media that he'd removed TikTok from his phone because he didn't. He was just tired of it sending data to China. Yeah. And obviously, you've got a situation now where Donald Trump, President Trump, has turned around and said he's going to remove TikTok he did. from from America. Mm-hmm. And TikTok have turned around and said we're not planning on going anywhere. So you get a situation there where it's now a massive corporation like TikTok, which has millions and millions of followers against a country and a divisive president like Donald Trump. And at that point, who will win? And unless you actually, as a country, ban that from all your networks, whether they be social or from your telecommunications networks or whatever you ban it from, is that in relation, do you impinge on someone's free speech then? But do people want their data and all their details being harvested by an app and sent to China to be to be poured over, and then that person then being targeted by either ads or other programs, or in some cases stolen. I wonder, we just don't I wonder, know. I wonder whether or not. So my daughter, who uses TikTok, um, I, I wonder whether or not the the generation that use TikTok actually don't understand the implications of where sending your data and sending your information to that a different country. That's a brilliant point. That's a brilliant do, do, do point. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. so 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 I they do. as a dad, yeah. I get it. I hundred percent get it. I don't want p- people's personal data. I don't want my daughter's personal data 
to be harvested and to be data mined and to be sent to yeah. another country to be used for whatever. Yeah. But I think the, the the demographic of the users of TikTok, yeah. and this is where TikTok themselves have been very clever, I suppose, in as much as they, they targeted that demographic, yeah. knowing knowing that actually the demographic of the people that use that social media probably don't understand or maybe don't care whichever whichever one it is mm -hmm. actually they don't care they don't understand what happens to their information they, they don't get it yeah but then but when you try and talk to them about it because they're already hooked on it yeah they don't care so they're just going to say well I'll just keep using it social media in all intents and purposes can can be an addiction People yeah. are addicted to social media. You oh, can't. I'm, it speaks to my I wife. Mean, say, I'm addicted to it. You know what I mean? It's just, with, oh, with, regards, really phone. with regards to TikTok, there was a previous one, I believe it's just like about a year ago, called, it called Face Swap. Right. Yeah. Where you just, you could age yourself or whatever, turn yourself yeah, into yeah. whatever it was. Again, what you're doing there is you're giving the camera or the access to your camera. Yeah. And then thus taking a photo of yourself. And then that data goes where? It, it'll go back to probably China. So the, all this whole thing, I agree with you guys. I think when it comes to like a, a, a young, I, I'm more nervous about my data going anywhere the, the, than I've ever been. I use a, I use a web browser built off, uh, built off uh, the Brave browser called Decenter, which basically blocks my data going anywhere. It'll block... Uh, trackers, it'll block cookies, it'll block that sort of stuff. Anything I want it to block, it'll block. So I don't have the situation where I'm now scared to go on the internet and be like, oh, wow, what's, what's, where's my data going? Yeah. Yes, of course, I still use things like Twitter. I still use things like Snapchat. I still use things that I would still... But to me, that means, at least on some level, I'm trying to control the data. Social media in itself is a magnificent tool to use and people make a fortune of it. And I mean a yeah. fortune of it. Yeah. As you as as you as you indicated earlier on, there are people who will sit there and they will make hundreds of thousands of pounds. And they'll be paid by companies. Some people will be paid by companies to promote such things. It's like on Twitter on, on YouTube, sorry. You can have videos that are sponsored by like Raid, Shadow Legends. If you, uh, they'll pay people to promote their stuff yeah. and people will promote their stuff and usually with the hashtag ad on Twitter or something like that on Facebook um, social media stopped being about interaction between your friends and being social and more how to get yourself out into the world yeah. and as you guys found out with regards to your world record that you putting that out there your, ver your visual and verbal reach was far greater because you were able to get it out there into the world. You don't need to know someone in the BBC or ITV yeah. or Channel 4. You can yeah. actually put yourself out in the world and say, hey, this is me, and then go and then see where the world takes you. Like, like you guys, you had a phenomenal interaction with regards to, to Darts Wolf, and that produced for you guys an astonishing result in what you were aiming to achieve. Yeah. With me, yeah. for me, Paramount, I, I got I was followed by the Chicago Blackhawks, an ice hockey team I adore. I've loved them since the early two thousands. They even when the even when they were garbage and they were garbage, to have them sit there and say and somebody in their social media team just click follow. For me, that was phenomenal, but to me, it means that actually, my voice I, I I am respected and uh, and recognized as a fan. Mm. Yeah, you you guys were able to get out there into the world, not just sat in the pub throwing darts or or, or whatever or wherever it, it, it occurred. Is you got yourself out into the wider world and had far more reach because you were able to put yourself yeah. out on social media. You don't need to be a big person or a big company now to be big. But chucking out there, though, you're just taking it back a little bit there. You're talking about data sent out to China. Is that data any safer there than it is with Zuckerberg via Facebook? No, absolutely not. Is Zuckerberg a human being or an android? Take well, back. there's your question. <laughs> so, I mean, it's incredibly like data from, from but, Star Trek. But, but, it, it, but it's interesting that, that they came out and obviously following the stories of President Trump banning TikTok in, in, in America and, and it, it was state-sponsored again and... Um, 
there was actually then a follow-up story and it's much that, that quite a lot of the American press came out and said, well, actually, Facebook's a lot more dangerous than TikTok mm. for, for, for what it is and in terms of the data mining and in terms of the access that Facebook allows various yes. other companies or various other states to gain access. Um, I mean, it, it's done, and, and I remember this from my my job and that there was a there was an app that you that loads of kids had years ago and it's the talking tom app. oh yeah yeah Do you remember yeah. the talking yeah, the tom cat. app and, and it's a cat, cat. And yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and and but there was a there was basically like a a, a human equivalent i can't for life remember the name of it i should have done some research really, but and it's basically like a human equivalent of a talking tom and the, what they actually said was was that that it could quite easily be hacked and that when you've got a young kid and they got their phone up like this and they were sort of effectively sort of trying to stroke the cat or whatever it was, it was actually a human behind the camera and that it had been hacked by sort of paedophiles or whatever it was. And actually the responses that this app was giving were actually human responses. And you're like, excuse my French, like, Holy shit! Sort of thing like like that, that is terrifying, mm. and that is like terrifying. And obviously, that app sort of died to death, and 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 sort of is no more. But but it just showed you the extent that people, companies, states will go to in terms of trying to gain access to data to information that allows them to use that information for their own benefit for Absolutely. whatever that may be and yeah. you, go, you go down the, the, the your chinese state funded highway sort of 5g network you go Absolutely. down the you know which you sort of mentioned in a um in, in a previous episode so the, the the dangers of it of of social media are there yeah i think there are lots of positive aspects of social media and yeah. I think lots to be gained from social media. Ultimately, what are we doing now? Yeah. We're creating a podcast and we're putting yeah. it out on social media. 100%, yeah. So, you know, we would be a little bit hypocritical if we said it's all about, you know, we, we, we're creating oh, a no, podcast. Absolutely. I don't, yeah. I don't have your phone number, guys, but I know if I wanted to talk to you, I could reach out to you on social media. 100%. 100%. And, there, and there you'd be the same, I'm sure, with Andy and, and, and obviously with Adam. It I, doesn't matter who anybody nowadays can get above their wherever they are in their life all you yeah. need is one video to go viral yeah as a and viral when i was a kid was uh, you, you were ill viral nowadays means you've had a video that's had an astronomical amount of views in an exceptionally short period of time and yeah. then people just monetize it and make money and what were we saying i don't know whether you said it off air or whatever it might have been right at the start we were saying all really the tbr needs is yeah we need oh, yeah. we need for tbr to to get to the next level the next level the next level we just need a a somebody whoever that may be yeah to tag us to listen to us to recommend us to and and i mean your big social influencers that yeah. have millions and millions and millions of followers. So, Kanye West, we know you listen. Yeah, just absolutely. share yeah. once. Just, just tag Joe Rogan. You know yeah, what? Yeah. Spotify. Come on, Joe. Do just what's right. Sort, sort, sort us out, Joe. Absolutely. Um, and and and, but that's all you need. You know. You, and and I was saying yeah. to add maybe a bit off when we were off mic a little bit of it, it is a little bit of hit and miss, and it, it's luck and it's timing and it's is that one person that perhaps has however many million followers, if they literally were to say, well, actually, yeah. those guys on TBR radio, you know, they, they, they might, not every episode they, you might be interested in, but they, they certainly hold, so yeah. there's a few that you'd be interested in, you'd be like, sound. So they, yeah. they, they, they get us out there on all their social media outlets, and all of a sudden, TBR yeah. goes stratospheric. Absolutely. And you do it overnight as well, because and of the amount of reach. 100%. And literally, it would be like, and I'm not suggesting that, that they would, but you know, some of your massive so YouTubers and vloggers and bloggers, yeah, all of a sudden they 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 listen to us. They think actually those guys are all right. Bang. Yeah. And you go from hundreds to hundreds of thousands of listeners, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, bloody hell, where did that come from? Yeah. So that's that, that that's taking down that um sort of biological route there of somebody taking interest into it. But then 
there's the other aspect that we've talked about. So taking it back to the presidential elections, uh, Cambridge Analytica, where, where, well, you know, where does that become actually clever marketing in terms of they're looking at people's interests and marketing adverts specifically them to get them to vote in a specific way? Is that clever marketing or is that overstepping the line? People, I think, as a general rule, want to be told what to do. They want to be given the illusion of free will, that they've made the decision, they've made the choice. But people essentially want to be told what to do. And it takes a, as I'd say, it takes a special kind of out the, outside the box thinking to sort of like look at everything from the outside in, not just accept and i wish my watch would stop going off by the way um <laughs> i w- it was you need so sometimes you just need to step outside as i say the box and look inside and just say you know what what i'm being told here isn't necessarily the truth a, a great example being brexit how how a ma- how a 300 and was it 50 million pounds was it a day to, to the nhs to the nhs really we're still later denied, despite the fact that it's clearly printed on the side of a sure, bus. bus yeah. It's on the side of a bus, but you put that bus out on social media and people who genuinely want to have the NHS funded better will go, okay, that's a good idea. And then there's those who are just like, well, we hate, I hate Europe. I don't want to be in it anyway. So that's a good way for me to segue. And, and it's always been the way with particle political. I mean, look at Twitter, didn't it? It's banned, the, over the election it banned uh, political advertising yeah. on, on 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 Twitter, so uh, and ultimately Labour lost. Whether whether it was because of a partially because of that, and then you've got the thing of because where where apparently now everything is now Russian interference. Yeah, uh, or China. You, absolutely, and then at that point you're you're taking away from the person who you're talking to and saying actually you didn't make that choice. That choice was made for you by somebody else in a completely different country. But, and it's... But, it's, but it's interesting, though, in as much as because of because of my likes and because of the pages that I like or the tweets that I like yeah. or whatever it may be, I don't want to see on my feeds random stuff that I'm not interested in. Yeah. I would much rather have... Well, I'd rather have no target marketing, but I'd much rather be target marketed yeah. than non-target marketed, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I'd much rather see the ads for your, your sports clothing, your golf equipment, your, your sports, your beer, your, you know, rather than the stuff that actually I genuinely have no interest in. Well, uh, just a quick question. Has anybody ever bought off an advert they've seen on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. You ever clicked on an advert and thought, yeah, fuck it, I'm buying that. No, but I have tagged a couple of you boys into stuff that I've seen on Facebook and thought, actually, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't. Oh, that beer keg is. The beer keg is, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> which looked pretty cool. Andy's like, hell, I'm having it, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. But, so, no, I haven't. But what I might have done is I might have seen a product that's been targeted to me, and then what I might have done is then looked at that product and then maybe gone on to something like an Amazon or a, a, a retail and looked for that product. Yeah. And I, interesting, done that. I very rarely will buy from a social media outlet as such. An interesting, an interesting little experiment to do is for for you guys and and for the listeners and the viewers is maybe over the course of a week talk because as as everybody's fully aware your phone your ipad anything your 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 amazon echo all of that stuff is listening to you mm. so over the course of of, of the week and they, and people can leave comments and and let them know maybe start talking about something a bit right maybe a holiday to say i'd say turkey or a holiday, or an item of clothing, or some sports, like I was saying about golf, yeah. and just see how many times that turns up in targeted advertising over the course yeah. of a week for you. 
Did you watch the, the the documentary on Netflix about this? Well, the guy who's trying to get his information back from Cambridge Analytica saying, okay, you've got this information, I want it back. Yeah. Great, great documentary. Oh, but you he, can request it. You can request you, it. You can request it. It's unlikely to be granted. But he is somebody who says your phone is not listening to you. It's your progressive thoughts, the things you've searched for is leading you towards that. And the algorithms lead you to take you down advertising. It's bullshit. I'm going to tell, and I, I'll tell you why. Don't sit on the Fence there, dude. I'm Just not, no, yeah. it is bullshit. <laughs> we were in Toys R Us, who sadly got into, inspir- in, into administration, and we saw Pie Face. And I, and I said to Kim, Should we get that for my cousin, uh, my nephew, sorry, Henry? And we, we talked about it. Ultimately, we didn't get it. But after that, I got so many adverts for Pie Face. Really? Something, yeah. Not something I'd ever thought about or considered. Wow. It was just, I, you know, we just said, as I just said, made a remark off the cuff there, which is why. And this is what scares me most because I've got a three year old daughter who will, who's growing up with this as a normality. We grew Absolutely. up with it. Yep. This was added into our lives later yep. on. You know what I mean? Pen and paper is where we started yeah. off. The Little Woods catalogue, Freeman's. Oh, exactly. that's yeah. That yeah. was your internet search. Yeah. yeah. We're going to tell if we want to know the weather. Oh. My, daughter, my daughter, who's three, will come in here and ask Google, Google what the weather's yeah. going to be like, yeah. you know, literally. Yeah. She'll start off, well, normally the stuff she says, like, stuff like, okay, Google, why has JJ got one bot- bottom? Why hasn't he got two? <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, though, it, and, it's, and, and, and again, you talk about the mood. That's going to be it. Yeah, do you know what? Do you know what? If you needed, I tell you what. If you needed a hint there, and if you needed even a even an indication that somebody that they're listening, there is your one. Well, it's funny Thank because God. we talk about and 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 I'm not right that mate. <laughs> I mean that was that was timing was golden there. And but you talk about the move towards the the the, the electronic and the social media and and. Ken mentioned there about the Argos catalogue years ago. They're actually not publishing it for this Christmas, are they? So this will be the first year that Sorry. they're actually not publishing an Argos catalogue and it's everything's going online. Um, but going back to the social media side and, and, and how frightening and how scary it can be in terms of what information is out there, and I'll relate two different stories. And, and I use this as part of my teaching in terms of e-safety, in terms of... Um, your online persona and one of the stories was um, a a police detective and he was basically charged with trying to find out as much information as he could from an individual without ever speaking to that individual and and I'm not even joking you you would be well, you probably won't be amazed, but the, the, the level of information and detail that, that that online police investigator could get from you yeah. about you and your family and your immediate friends without actually having to speak, without speaking to you was frightening. Mm. And I mean, frightening. And the, the other story that, that I use uh, there's a guy in America, and he did a so it's a basic social experiment, and and he called it Facebook Bingo. And what he did was he, he had hundreds and hundreds of friends on Facebook, and he basically wrote them all down, and he basically spun this great big wheel, and the wheel went and it stopped on a name, and he's like, right, okay, so he went about an hour, two hours, something, and he jumped on a plane, flew across America, knocked on this bloke's door. And the bloke answered, and he's like, Ad, how are you? And this guy's like, uh, who are you? And he's like, oh, how's your wife? How was your party? And basically, for the next 30 seconds, he was like, oh, you know, oh, um, you know, how, how, how was your daughter? It was her birthday, wasn't it, last week? And this guy's like, mate, back the up, otherwise I'm going to knock you the out sort of thing, and I'm going to call yeah, the police. Yeah. Like, mate, we've been friends for years. He's like, I don't, mate, I don't even know who you are. I don't know you. And he went, we've been friends for years. And what happened was that it was effectively, he he befriended him, I say befriended him, he clicked, obviously, you know, friends on Facebook, friend request, oh, oh, three mutual friends, he must be okay, my mate knows him, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and the guy that he visited got really, 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 like, offended about the fact that this information about him was out there and 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 it 
stop short of him beating this guy up and eventually the gap to come clean and say it's actually a bit of a social experiment sort of thing. I'm just tell you this. And but he was horrified at the information yeah. that about him that he was out there. He knew his daughters' names, he knew their birthdays, he knew what they were doing last weekend, he knew his mother in law had been ill, he knew his wife saying blah 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 blah. And you were like like wow, like yeah. Like wow, and yes. and I, obviously I use that as you know I use that as part of my my, my teaching stuff in terms of kids and online yeah. and stuff and it but you, you go back to that data and that information and how yeah, is absolutely. that information being used as, and it's as, a, as an interesting side as an and I mean I'm genuinely interested in this because technology and the way we use technology and our presence and footprint on social media and our presence on the internet and whether it be Tallway Radio, or whether it be Andy, or whether it be myself, or you, or you guys, as as an educator and as a teacher, guys, does your does, does how you teach this sort of stuff does that change? Does that change like on a on a how how often does that change? Because technology and social media and the way we use the internet changes, and information technology changes weekly, monthly. Do you have do you how do you stay ahead of all that? Or even um, up to date with it. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Lots of people say I don't because I'm a 47 year old dinosaur. <laughs> but um, it, the way, if there's like big news story, so in terms of the Donald Trump, the Huawei yeah. 5G stuff, the yeah. um, the stuff in terms of the, um, the the Russian involvement in the elections, and it's that sort. Yeah. So if there are big news stories, you would talk about them, and you would talk about why, what, what's the implication of that. I yeah. think for for the level of knowledge that our kids need, it's it's sort of very similar in terms of one social media outlet to the next. You know, Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram, they're all very similar in terms of your, your social and sorry, your, your your security measures and your security yeah. precautions that you need to take place. So a lot of the time you try to educate them in terms of making sure that it's not public and it might only be friends and make sure it's not friends of friends and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Okay. Um, so in terms of, I mean, I, I do remember we, we did get a massive list of um, popular social media. This is in, in my previous school. We got a massive list of popular social media websites and there were over 100. And there, wow. were, over, there were over 100 social media websites. And it would say like um, um, this one isn't and, and it didn't quite rank them in terms of these are dangerous and these aren't. But it was yeah. like. Um, and this is unsecured. It, it, there was one, and, and, and I'm not going to mention the name for, for various legal reasons, but there was one that, that that was emanated in sort of Eastern Europe somewhere, and it was basically a a, a chat room facility. Yeah. But what they actually didn't tell you was when you went to the chat room, the chat room gains access to your camera. So you yeah. thought you you thought you were in a chat room, and actually they could see you. And, you know, so, so there, were, there were various implications about that. Um, but we would get relatively regular updates on what, what social media sites were out there and what, what were the pros and what were the cons. But in terms of the actual teaching and educating the kids, yeah, a lot of the, the actual teaching was the same. It was make sure your security settings are set the way they should be. Make sure that you don't talk to people you don't know. Make sure you never agree to meet people you don't know. And you would go yeah. down the very much generic e-safety type of course, teaching. Yeah. Um, I mean, if there was anything specific, and obviously we were always open to if a child had had any experiences of any particular social media um, um, sort of conversation or social media engagement in any way, we would be happy to discuss that. But the flip side to that is you've got to be very careful with disclosure of information of course, because absolutely. I, as an educator, I can't question the child because effectively that becomes the interview and therefore yeah. they're only entitled to one, so therefore the police can't ask the same things because I've already done it type thing. So you've got to be quite careful in in, in how you respond to a disclosure as such. Um, you're in a very tricky but, situation then, aren't you? Because you're, yeah. you're effectively moulding and shaping the security, the, the the minds and security of of yeah of their that, that is now that is that is a phenomenal the phenomenally difficult job in today's day and age. It, it is when when 
it is when a lot of their time is spent yeah. on social media. You know, years ago it was you might go on Facebook and write a comment and then log off. Yeah. Now they are online twenty four seven. You know yes, that that that's, yeah. that's the, the difficulty, and and it's distinct. It's trying to educate them in terms of distinguishing the the sort of just the social browsing that actually isn't really an issue, and then the actual sort of hardcore social media outlets that will mine your data. They will target market you that they will focus their attention on you blah 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 yeah. so so you know so that, that that's a difficult distinction to make um but yeah generally it, it's it, it's just the the, the generic yeah, stuff that, that you would that you would teach your, your nephew your niece sort of thing do you know what i mean effectively you have to you give them the tools and then effectively have to rely on free you have to rely on common sense to yeah, so they, you do a fantastic it, yeah. job, mate. I'm, I'm genuinely. It's just I'm glad I don't. I'm it, it it in the next possible way. I'm glad I don't have a kid in this day and age to have to. Yeah. So sort of protect them and yeah and do. That. I mean, we, I, I'm dead lucky. Both both my daughters are sensible. They're responsible. They listen yeah. to what I say um, in terms of. Not necessarily to how much they that they're online because Amy's on for hours, but it's what they do and what social media they use. That's half the battle. Do, as well. do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm quite lucky in terms of that. But yeah, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. We talked we talked about this offline, didn't we, earlier before we started? And I said my biggest fear is you're dealing with that now. Ten yeah. years. To my my kids are ten years younger than yours. Yeah. Dealing with that in ten years' time, when yeah. I'm ten years more out of touch, yeah, it's scary. How much do you limit your kids in what they do and they don't access? That's um, a great question. Yeah. yeah. So, so Amy, Amy, who who is fifteen, um, she she will go on TikTok, and she hasn't got a Facebook account, she hasn't got a Twitter account, um, she has got an Instagram account that all of her friends bought. Her Instagram account um, is set to private, so it's not public. So all the, all the settings are set to private. Anything that she posts on there can only be seen by people that she's accepted as friends so that she knows who they are. Because part of the issue is if you ever get – effectively, it's public, anybody can view your profiles on most social yeah. medias. Yeah. And actually, if you set it to private, you have to actually accept them as a friend before they can see your profile as such. So, yeah. So I, I, I chat to her quite a lot about that. Um, she is aware that of the dangers and the stranger danger and and the the, the online dangers of of chat rooms and various things that that you hear. So she is aware of that. But again, it's a fine line between making them aware and not scaring them. Did you know yeah, what I mean? It is making them. Yeah. Um, and and I'm I genuinely I'm, I'm we're really lucky, me and Jen, in terms of sort of our kids are oh, they are responsible that they are. They are intelligent. They they yeah. do understand the risks. Um, yeah. And I, whilst I do chat to them quite a lot, um, I, I haven't yet had to really sort of say, don't use that one or don't use that one. Or yeah. um, the only thing that I've said is just make sure your privacy settings are set Absolutely. to, to yeah. private yeah. effectively. And and they have done that, and I trust them to, to do that and stuff. So, um, you know, so but I I a hundred percent get that the shoe could be on the other foot and you might have a situation where parents perhaps have children who aren't as responsible and they can get easily peer pressured into doing various things and and you uh, know so and, and that and that that that's a worry. Um but yeah we, we you know we, I think we're in a world where you have to try and educate. You have to try and educate you have to try and make don't shy away from the potential dangers but try and educate kids in terms of what the dangers are and how that might implicate them and how that might affect them and their family and their people that they know and their friends and stuff and Absolutely. and and you, you hope to try and get them to a point where they can see the negative aspect instead of you preaching the negative aspect it's about getting them to see the negative yeah. side of it and therefore they understand that they shouldn't do it if yeah. that makes up sense so we're, we're in a uh, world now where no one's anonymous yeah. No one, no one can hide behind a wall. I mean, when I was a kid, it was you who chat at ASL and that sort of thing, and, and that that was it. And then now today, as I say, I'm, I'm I don't have that extra layer of responsibility with regards to looking after 
kids and look yeah. at, looking after their where they're browsing or where they're roaming on in, in the world and i'm sure yeah. and i'm sure adam will come into that at some point in the future with regards to to dealing with that but i suspect at that point social media will be far more immersive than it yeah. is right oh, now and I, yeah, and, I, and I and i and i've and i wonder and I wonder from the perspective of with you Gather, you teaching it now, your yours is going to change on a on a yearly basis because of how far technology and social yeah. media will progress. Yeah. Adam, in ten years' time, it's gonna be uh, so immersive, I, you're gonna be in a completely different world. This is knowing, gonna be knowing where really we are, dread, know, really knowing dread. where we are now compared to ten years ago. Mm. I'm glad that my kids are now the age they are now, as opposed yeah. to Knowing where we were ten years ago, knowing where we are now, and then yeah. thinking about where we could be in ten years' time. Yes, and the graphs always go on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Andy, yeah. what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on any of this? I mean, does this is this any sort? Is this scary to you, or are you just like happy go lucky, see how it goes, or do you have any a, a, any anything in place to deal with this sort of thing? Um. Because I realise that because I realise that's been a lot that's been a lot thrown out there, and I just, I'm intrigued to see what your take on on the whole thing is as well with regards to what Gaz and I have been talking about. I, th I think there's there's multiple routes you could take. So you know, like you use a secure browser, um, you go down like running a VM on your machine, use VPNs. There's all sorts of ways of reducing you know tracking and stuff like that. Um, Social media wise, I don't know. It's you sort of dip your toe in as much as you want. I, I like on, on one hand, I, I know I could just remove all my post stuff, but then not put any information in, you know, like locations and stuff. But I can't say I'm too bothered by it. If, if some guy in China wants to look at this face, like, feel <laughs> 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 at least someone does. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I can't say I'm, I'm, I'm too bothered by it. I think. For me, I'd probably get lost in the woods just because there's I don't stand out online, I don't really stand out from you know, I don't post all the time. I you know, I don't say I don't know, I, I, I don't post where I am all the time. Stuff or XYZ and, and yeah, exactly. It's just very generic. Um, okay, yeah, in, in, in person, I'll probably stand out because I'm tall. <laughs> Ginger beard and all that stuff. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, online, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't dabble too much. Yeah. So like I say, like, I'm on Facebook and all that, but it's on Instagram. I really post pictures and stuff. And yeah, normally it's about my van or my dog anyway. <laughs> uh, no, that's fair. So, but, so to go, so to, uh, to, to go back, I think, with regards to social media and access to social media and the and the impact of social media. What's the to, to all of you? What's the What's the biggest world event you've ever heard of just via social media? Not by the news, not by running into it on the radio, just on social media. The thing that you just like scrolling through, like, oh, wow. Uh, oh. Do we call it, uh, or oh, can we include emails in this? The Nigerian prince. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for a reply to that. Whether, whether or not it was, I don't know whether it's social media. Um, I remember, I remember the, the news channels running the story, but the way that we initially heard about it was the fact that effectively the internet went down. Now that what isn't really social media as such uh, was nine eleven. Um, yeah. the, the one literally today was the bombing. Was it Lebanon? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Words, I yeah. mean, literally, yeah. that came up on my, on my social media, and it was like this happened like 15 minutes ago. A firework um, exploded, and it was like yeah, hot. And, and I, don't, I don't know whether you've seen the footage, but sorry, Adam. No, I'm just going to sit here and just shake my head, mate. I'm not going to do that. I'm not it's like, like it is. It's like wow. And um, so, so that literally, that's like other, you know, other side of the world, and and it came up, and it's like this has just happened 15 minutes ago, and you're like. Like before social media, that came up on like a, a Twitter feed. So before that, I would have had to have waited effectively until the mm. back in the day, the ten o'clock news or the nine o'clock news or whatever so it Stewart was. Told us yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Where and 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 e even with the onset of sort of Sky News and 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 your twenty four hour news programs. Yeah. Because obviously back in the day it was well it was the ten o'clock news and then it rebranded to the six or then the nine mm. depending on which channel you're on. Yeah. 
And that was it. You know, you had that... you had the radio. You had radio yeah. overnight. You had World Service, and that was it. And that, that was, was the social media back in yeah. the day. The, the, the news finished at ten o'clock. Yeah. Trevor McDonald said, "Thanks a lot. See you later. See you tomorrow." And yeah. then you're waiting till seven o'clock in the morning till ITV or BBC kicked yeah. in. Yeah. Whereas now, social media means that news, as you guys have just, as you rightly pointed out, is twenty four seven. Yeah. And I believe that Sky News, BBC News, all those sorts of news programs and news channels that now come out have, have had to have had to do that in response to the fact that social media is so immediate yeah. that you can now sit there and you can sit on Twitter all night, scroll, yeah. scroll, scroll, yeah. scroll, and then you will be able and, and by the by the morning you'll be bang up to date what's happening in, in the world. Yeah. How, how many times though, when you watch the news is it reported via Twitter, yeah. via Instagram, yeah. via Facebook? Somebody has shared this, yeah. Yeah. and it's like that's the lead on the stories yeah. and not the news itself, yeah. which is alien to people yeah. from our, uh, our generation. I, yeah. Absolutely, I agree with guys. I remember nine eleven. Uh, as I, I, if I close my eyes, I know exactly where I am. Mm. I'm stood. Yeah in 84 Western Avenue, I'm sat near my kitchen playing football manager and my TV's in the corner and I'm watching CNN and I'm getting goosebumps talking about it and it's a sunny day. Uh, and, 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 I, and, I, and the and whole thing... And, and whether or not that's that social media, news. but whether or not, you know, was that social media or was that and just the world becoming a slightly smaller place in terms of the yeah. news aspect? But yeah. that, that's probably Princess Diana w- was another mm-hmm. one. But in terms of me not, it it wasn't reported via BBC or ITV in terms of it being sort of national. It was something that happened overseas, something that was obviously picked up on and was reported. Yeah. And and we, we, I was teaching down in Oxford and, and basically the internet, there was somebody, there was a whisper that, so somebody had bombed the Pentagon, and that was the first that we heard about. It. So, oh. what sort of bombed the Pentagon? What? And then we went online, and we literally couldn't get any news stories at all. So, couldn't get any news stories, and literally the internet. Just I've, I've crashed. never heard that. I've never heard that. that that's um, incredible. The, the, well, the strangest thing is that day I, I just bought a new mobile phone and I switched it on quite late in the afternoon, so it's charging. Back in the day, you had to charge your mobile mm. phone, didn't you? And I'd spent my afternoon worryingly setting up a website to promote the sabotage films that we just made. Wow, okay. I switched my phone on and I, the only thing I got there was a message from you saying, turn the TV on now. There's some yeah. crazy shit happening in New York. Yeah. yeah. And strangely enough, something that affected me more afterwards thinking about that is the little band that played in the foyer of the war with the World Trade Center on September the 10th was a band from all centuries. It was. Yeah, it was fat cat. It's hundred percent true. Hundred percent true. So, so I, I went to school with the brother. Yeah, the played it was, that, yeah. Wow. So, there were two brothers. There, there were two brothers. There, there was Zarig and Vahe or Vahe Cooper, and and um, I knew them, and and I knew their uncle and their dad through playing cricket and stuff. And they were in a band called Fat Cats. I think they changed their name to. Oh, I can't remember it, but or they might be some pride the Fat Cats and. And the day before the planes hit, they were in the World Trade Center, and it, and uh, they were in the Twin Towers, and it was like crazy, and you were like, 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 holy, holy hell, like it, unbelievable. As, uh, as, a, as an interesting little segue from where Farada was saying that you'd obviously messaged him with regards to what's happening, we had a uh, a guy turn up, uh, literally knocked on the door and said about about window double glazing and i turned around to him and said mate do you have no idea what's happening today and he's just like no i've been out on the road it's like mate come in sat him on the sofa gave him a cup of tea and he watched cnn yeah as it was happening and he had no idea whereas now in social media's age you can't go 30 seconds without no, something happening. True. Uh, and no. this is the this is different he'd been on the road all day and hadn't heard anything about it but now, literally, a celebrity falls out of a club, drunk, and oh, it's yeah. second. It, something, it, something, and again, part of it comes down, I think, as a lot of it now, is it's like, if you're going to sit there and allow people to put stuff on social media, there's, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot to talk about with regards to, do these companies censor people? 
Yeah. Do they stop things getting out there? That they think, well, you know what? No. I mean, Twitter has a follower ban. If you follow too many people, you're banned for you're you're banned from following, liking, or retweeting for like three days. Yeah. Mm. And and these are those like things. Do they try and keep people quiet? Do they try and keep certain yeah. political opinions quiet? Do they try and keep that? And this is obviously a, another thing that Donald Trump puts out there on his social media to try and bring light to it. Well, maybe, 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 maybe for a subject for another podcast, mm. super injunctions. But we're going to yeah. bring this one to a close yeah. right now. And as soon as we finish this one, I'm going to share a super injunction that I'm privy to with these okay. three guys here. But I'm not going to share it with you because I'm not legally allowed to. Um, <laughs> on that bombshell. Oh no! What a tease! Oh, okay. Sound like Alan Parsons. Let's say I tease. Andy. Goodbye. You just. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm that's off. it. I'm off. No, that's <laughs> it. Fuck it. Ken. Thank you for having me, guys. It's been a genuine pleasure. We'll see you all again soon. Top man. Yes. Um, yeah. See you guys. Love talking about it. Uh, I think we could probably run and run with the social media stuff. Um, I'm intrigued to know what Ad's about to tell us. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's... Bid you a farewell, and yeah, yeah. Um, I'll see you. Quick soon. exit. Let's get on with it. <laughs> so until next time, when no doubt we'll have plenty more stuff to talk about. Take care.